Hello, it's Wednesday. Um, not much has changed here. I know it doesn't seem like it's Wednesday, but it is. Um, and I'm gonna keep reading. Um, and hopefully I won't get cut off this time. But we're gonna start with the winter. You can see a picture of the farm right here and Roz down here doing her thing. So let's find out what happens in the winter. When Roz lived on the island, winter had seemed like one long, cruel blizzard. On Hilltop Farm, winter wasn't quite so harsh. The temperature fell but then rose, storms came and went, snow piled up and then melted away. Roz spent winter preparing the farm for spring. She wanted everything to be perfect for when she left. She tuned up the machines, she made fertilizer from old grass clippings and manure, she planned which crops would be seeded in which fields. She carefully looked over the herd, making sure each cow was happy and healthy. She made long lists of supplies, and then Mr. Sharif placed big orders. The herding machine hauled bales of hay into the pasture, and the cows gathered around to eat, steam puffing from their mouths. Some of the cows were dried off and wouldn't be milked again until after the drying season. Others went to the milking parlor twice a day as usual. Bottles were filled, boxes were loaded, and the milk truck rolled away on its delivery run. No matter the season, the dairy farm kept chugging along. Every day after school, Jaya and Jad ran to their bedrooms and got right to their homework. And when their homework was finished, their secret studies began. They researched the design and construction and maintenance of Roz and robots, hoping to discover some way for Roz to safely escape. The information wasn't easy to find, but the children were persistent, and after weeks of work, they finally found what they were searching for. Chapter 42, The Plan. Jaya pressed a button on the side of the milking parlor and the door hummed. She and her brother stepped inside and wound their way past gleaming pipes and tanks and over to where Roz was cleaning some equipment. We found a diagram of your design, said Jaya. We think we can help you escape. The problem is your transmitter, said Jad. That's the device that sends out your electronic signal. If we can remove your transmitter, you'll be able to run away whenever you want without anyone tracking you. Do you know how to remove it? asked Roz. I think so, the boy chuckled nervously, but we won't know for sure until we open you up and take a look. We'll have to do it late at night, said Jaya, when Dad is sleeping. We just need to find a place where we can work in private, said Jad, rubbing his chin. How about the old barn, said Roz. It's quiet and hidden. I can prepare the barn today and you can operate on me tonight. Everyone agreed and the plan was set. Chapter 43, The Operation. Midnight and the children were wide awake in their beds. Jaya and Jad were waiting for their father to fall asleep. Once he was snoring deeply, they tiptoed past his bedroom, down the stairs and out the back door. They crept across the farm to a cluster of trees and there was the old barn, looming above the undergrowth like a mountain. Its door was open a crack and a wedge of light spilled outside. The children closed the door behind them and walked past wooden railings and stairways and up a ramp to a platform in the back corner of the barn. Lanterns hung from the walls and cast their soft light upon a large table. Standing behind the table was the robot. Hello, children, said Roz. How do you like our operating room? It's a little dark, said Jaya, but it'll work. Jad pulled his computer from his pocket. As he brought up the diagram of Roz's body, his face tightened with worry. We've never done anything like this before. Just do your best, said Roz, patting him on the back. That is all I can ask of you. The robot unfastened her tool belt and draped it over the railing. Then she lay flat on the table. It was time to begin. Jaya looked down at Roz. All set? Roz looked up at Jaya. All set. The girl felt under the robot's head, found the button with her fingers, and pressed it. Click. Roz's body relaxed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. Jad took a deep breath. Then he grasped the robot's head in his hands and twisted until thwip, it popped off. In the smooth socket where the head had just been was another button. Jaya pressed it, and the robot's chest opened up. They peered into the hollow chest cavity and saw a tangle of tubes connected to a grid of boxes. These were the robot's electronic organs. That's the transmitter, said Jad, pointing. The children reached into the robot's chest, carefully removed a box and a tube, and then set them on the table. That was easy, said Jaya, smiling. 
Actually, I think this is the transmitter over here, said Jad, and he removed another box. Then Jaya removed another tube. The boy checked his computer and said, I might have this backward. A bead of sweat rolled down his forehead as he removed another box. Wait, I think we should start over. Jaya nudged her brother out of the way and started plugging parts back into the robot's chest. You're doing it wrong. Jad nudged his sister out of the way and started removing parts again. I don't know about you, reader, but I'm a little confused. So are the children. Pretty soon, Roz's internal parts were strewn across the table, and nobody knew where anything was supposed to go. Why did you remove so many boxes? yelled Jaya. Why did you remove so many tubes? yelled Jad. The siblings argued for a while. Then they sat quietly for a while. This is the picture of what's happened. The children were tired and cranky and afraid they'd never get Roz working again. Jaya slumped against the table and looked up at the ceiling. Then her eyes drifted to the lanterns dimly glowing above, and then she had an idea. She climbed onto a wooden railing, grabbed one of the lanterns from its hook, and climbed back down. When she held the lantern close to Roz's body, Jad noticed that there were different numbers lightly etched onto each of the internal parts. Now things were starting to make sense. The children quickly removed the correct box and tube. They put the robot back together and they turned her on. Click. Roz's body tensed. Her quiet whirring slowly started. Her eyes began to glow, but she didn't say a word. Are you okay? said Jad. Roz pointed to her mouth. Can you speak? said Jaya. Roz shook her head. She can't speak, cried the boy. We must have put something back in the wrong place. Click. The children opened up Roz's body, rearranged some of her internal parts, and put her back together again. Click. Roz powered up and said, Children, I can now speak, but I cannot move. Click. After hours of trial and error, and with morning light seeping into the barn, the operation was a success. Roz stood up, scanned her internal parts, and said, Children, you did it! You removed my transmitter! Thank you so much for your help. You're very welcome, said Jaya, yawning. Jad checked his computer. I can still see your signal on the map, he said. Your transmitter is still working, so keep it close until you leave the farm. And then he stuffed the little electronic device into the robot's tool belt. Children, there is a bit of bad news, said Roz in a serious tone. I know you have been up all night, but I am afraid it is time for you both to get ready for school. So the children were able to do it. They had me worried about halfway through that they weren't going to be able to get her back together. Ah. Chapter 44, The Patient Robot. After being trapped on Hilltop Farm for nearly a year, Roz was now free to run away anytime she liked. But without Brightville to guide her, she wouldn't make it far. So the robot patiently waited for spring to come and for her son to return so they could begin their long journey home together. Chapter 45, The Barn Conversations. As winter dragged on, Ross spent more of her time inside with the herd. There were long stretches of quiet. The, chow, the cows chewed their hay. The robot tapped the farm computer. The wind gently rattled the windows and then someone would start talking, someone else would chime in, and then the quiet of the barn would gradually be overtaken by conversations like these. I am so bored, Tess was staring at the floor. I can't wait until spring when I can wander through tall grass and feel warm sunlight on my back. I just hope I don't die of boredom first. Old Annabelle snorted. You young cows are spoiled rotten, she said. Your lives are so easy and still you find things to complain about. Tess rolled her eyes. Yeah, yeah, we should be grateful for what we've got. You've told us before. Well, you should be grateful for what you've got, said Annabelle. I've lived on other farms, and trust me, you have nothing to complain about. Tess couldn't help being curious, and she said, What were those other farms like? Oh, I'd rather not discuss them, said Annabelle in a low voice. You see, I witnessed some terrible things on those farms. It was a blessing when I moved here, but I often think about the animals I left behind. I hope they're okay. The old cow sank into thought for a moment. I know life here isn't perfect, she said at last, but we have so much to be grateful for. We have our lovely herd, and we have this beautiful barn, and we have Tess. I'm sorry. We have Roz, added Tess. And we have Roz. 
Annabelle turned and smiled at the robot in the corner. Roz listens to us and treats us with love and kindness, and she makes our lives as comfortable as she possibly can. We certainly will miss her when she's gone. Roz, why do humans need so much cow's milk? asked Lily as the other cows calves crowded around her. It was a question they'd all been wondering about. Well, there are billions of humans in the world, explained Roz, and many of them drink milk and combine it with different ingredients to make different foods. What kinds of foods? said another calf. Butter and cheese and yogurt are made with milk, said Roz. Many desserts are also made with milk. What's a dessert? said someone else. A dessert is a sweet food eaten at the end of a meal. Popular desserts include cake and custard and ice cream. This answer only raised more questions. What is cake? What is custard? What is ice cream? Roz tried her best to explain these foods to the calves, but it wasn't easy. After all, the robot couldn't even perform the simple act of eating. How could she possibly describe the flavors and sensations of tasting delicious desserts? Lily interrupted. Just tell me this, Roz. When we're older, will our milk be used to make desserts? Yes, said the robot. The calves smiled. Then they trotted away, happy in the knowledge that someday they'd help bring sweet and delicious things into the world. It's almost time for spring, said Roz to the herd. It's almost time for me to run away, back home to the wilderness. I am sorry that I must go, but you will all be well cared for, well cared for when I am gone, I promise. Cows began mooing from their stalls. Don't worry about us, Roz. There's no need to apologize. We understand why you're running away. Lily poked her head through the railings of her stall and said, I could never run away to the wilderness. I would be too frightened. I'd, to, I'd love to run through the wilderness, said Tess. It sounds so exciting. No wilderness for me, thank you very much, said Annabelle. I just want a quiet, cozy life. I have plenty to fear in the wilderness, said Roz. However, I have more to fear here. I can never be my true self around humans, and so I must try to return to my home. I only wish I could do it by myself, she went on, but I need help. I could never escape from the farm without the children, and I could never find my way home without my son. I feel bad asking so much of them. Don't feel bad, said Lily. Brightbill and the children want to help you. They love you. We all do. The farm won't feel the same without you, Roz, but we know you're doing the right thing. The herd agreed with Lily, and throughout the barn, cows quietly nodded their heads. And the last chapter we're going to read today is chapter 46, The Spring. With each passing day, the sun climbed a little higher, and its rays grew a little warmer. The last patches of snow melted away, and color returned to the land. The pasture, the fields, the trees, they were all turning bright green, and the air slowly filled with the fresh smells of spring. Many of the cows had been steadily growing bigger, and now calving season had arrived. When the time was right, each cow went out to the pasture so her calf could be born in the soft grass. The robot stood nearby just in case anyone needed her help, but nobody ever did. Even the first-time mothers knew what to do instinctively, and soon newborn calves were frolicking around the farm. Spring was a happy, exciting time, and yet Roz was distracted. More and more, she found herself looking to the skies, hoping to see Brightbill and his flock. She knew they were on their way. And so tomorrow we're going to start with chapter 47, which is called The Dinner. So we are halfway through with our book. This book has 90 chapters. And um, we will pick up with this tomorrow. So I want you guys today to tell me what was your favorite part of what we just read? I know what my favorite part is. And I'll leave a flip grid that I'll tell you. Um, but what was your favorite part? And tell me why. Okay? So I will see you guys tomorrow, Thursday. Bye.